I'm Mary Papino, and welcome to Fit For You, the show that teaches you how to live a healthier and more fit lifestyle. Today, we're going to extend a little bit of our last show. My guest is Dino Roos, and we're gonna talk about spinal alignment. So many people don't realize how important spinal alignment is, not just to how we look, but to how we feel. Believe it or not, you could be having some aches and pains that are coming from just having improper spinal alignment. And it happens from our daily routines, the simple things we do throughout the day, lifting, pulling, pushing, whatever. So I think you're gonna get some interesting advice. And as always, if you have any questions, you can email us, info at thefitness.com, or give us a call, 330-629-2992. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. I am happy to welcome back my dear friend and one of my favorite massotherapists, Dino Roos. And we had such an interesting show the last time, and we had so many inquiries and questions that we wanted to continue and talk a about spinal alignment. Because spinal, yeah, spinal alignment really does have a lot to do with pain and discomfort and so on and so forth, correct? Absolutely. And plus, I'm a, a very good person to utilize as a specimen when we talk about spinal alignment. Because you like massage? I love massage. <laughs> okay. Started when I was in my <laughs> teens and love, love, love it, number one. But also, I'm one of these people that my natural posture and growing up, you mm. know, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence and I think it was a little bit of, you know, as a result of that doing this and then eventually, and this is what my posture really was. I mean, I'm one of these people. Well, you know, Mayor, t I wanna just stop you right there. Because when you have that type of feeling, like you're not real comfortable or you're a little bit shy or you sort of in reclose yourself, you know, you try to cover up. Yes. And, and I think people don't even realize right. that. And, you know, it, it, and when you don't feel good about yourself or, you know, if, if you feel uncomfortable about your body shape or whatever, you know, everybody's trying. And what that's doing when you're like this, really, it's pooching out your tummy. Ab you know, it's mm -hmm. causing you a, a lot of issues, which you'll explain, you know, in the shoulders and in the, you know, in the back and also in the abs. Correct. But then don't you look so much thinner and so much better? You know, it's, I tell people, there's so much about beauty. It's not just physical beauty. It's how you carry yourself and, it, and it's looking confident and it's, and posture is absolutely key. And if you're not in good alignment, you can't have good posture. Right. Yeah. Well, one thing is a lot of people try to, do, let's go back to the poochie belly. A lot of people, <clears throat> you can do 100,000 sit-ups, but if your pelvis is not aligned. I'm going to, now we're going to reveal the chart, which is okay. going to be a big part of our now, chit chat right now. Now, I want you right to now. look at this. This okay. is an old, this is one of the pointers when I was in high school that was loaned to me by a school teacher. So. Now, we're not that far apart in age. I remember that from grade school. Yeah, well, and I also remember getting yeah, hit with uh, it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. But anyway, but when your pelvis is not aligned, female pelvises, by the way, have a different angle. Male pelvis. Right, but before we start, let's explain what this is. This is the okay, skeletal. Okay, this is a skeletal chart that's universal. Shows the, the bone structure of the body. Of the body and how... Uh, the center of gravity. So this hook and this line that goes all the way down with this arrow at the bottom. Right. Tells is like, us. Is like a plumb line that carpenters are used to get a straight edge, which is all affiliated with gravity. Same uh, gravity Concept. pull that's on our bodies. And gravity, gravity has is constantly pull. pulling us constantly, down. Constantly, constantly. The heavier you are, the more you're out of alignment, gravity has a huge effect on your body. Because where you're carrying the excess fat, it's pulling in those different areas, correct? And kind of through, and plus it's more weight than your body was True, made to carry. But it's also due to the fact where you have some weakness. 
like you on in muscle uh, contraction they call them antagonists which is muscles that are opposing or opposite if you have a contracted quadricep yes you have to have some movement on the back which is called synergistic if you're carrying too much weight which a lot of fellows carry them here and women and women but you see it a lot more in men okay um, where the, the, the weight on, on the front side of the, in the stomach area is putting so much weight, the back muscles, okay, are opposing that. So there, any time that a muscle has to take up the structural So what we're saying, pressure, simply put, is this. You've got all this weight in the front, so it's pulling you this way. Yes. And it's supposed to be, you want to be going the opposite of that. Well, so the extra weight is working against what you, the alignment you were are supposed to be in. Correct. Perfect. Correct. But I have to show that your ear is over your shoulder. Your shoulder is over your hip. Your hip is over your knee and your knee is over your foot. That's perfect posture. And we will get to that, but I'm sort of straight to here and then show me where I see curve. Okay. You see curve <clears throat> from here to here, to the top of what they call the low back, the base of the ribs. Okay, so I don't want to be like this no. because that's perfect. No, because that's putting a lot of pull and strain on these posterior muscles of the back, the back muscles that hold you up. And that can cause pain. Pain and... Discomfort. Discomfort and just a bad posture like we talked about. Now, let's, let me add when we have too much weight and you talk about carrying too much weight in the abdominal area. Right. Okay, and the, I wish I would have my five pounds of fat. I don't have it to demonstrate, <laughs> but Think about strapping five or 10 pounds of fat around your waist, right? right? Or right. like right in here, when you have extra weight. Now that's pulling you, right? That's pulling you, and it's actually exaggerating this curve in the middle of your back, which is called the thoracic vertebrae, or what they also call a kyphotic curve. So in the neck, as you see, the neck is going in one direction. These thoracic uh, the vertebrae go in an opposite direction. And then the lumbar takes on the same curve as in the neck. So they have to be aligned. And tell us daily activity. You pick up, you know, things. You pick up your children. You pick up things when you're doing housework or when you're working, whatever your profession is. Right. All of the briefcases, heavy purses, does that throw us out of alignment? Absolutely. Now, when you're talking about weight, you're talking about this section here, right? I Your was stomach. talking about that, okay. yes. So what that does is that puts an extra pull and exaggerates this lumbar curve. So with this weight, it causes my hips to do this. Tilt back. Tilt forward. So even though it looks like I'm going this way, yes. it's actually coming forward. Well, the, the bones the are. The bone, yes. But everything else is coming in front of that. Okay. Uh, the weight and whatnot. And that's important. Very important. Very important because if you don't have an equal balance, which we talked about in the last segment with Dr. Lilius, there has to be a balance in the body, which is called homeostasis. Okay? Mm -hmm. Homeostasis means balance. So what happens there is you have all this extra weight and gravity is supposed to be pulling directly down these weight bearing structures as is the hip, the, the knee, the ankle, and up and through the neck here. Then muscles have to take the part of a bone. And anytime a muscle takes a structural or a supporting factor rather than muscle, rather than bone, then the muscle becomes more dense, more tighter, and then obviously uh, causes pain. 
So the muscle is over the bone and it allows us to move. Correct. So you're saying, give us the simple terms now, the muscle has to take over because we're so out of alignment Correct. that we're forcing the muscle to do things it wasn't designed to do. Correct. Now I want to show you just a real simple, just take your head okay. and I want you to put it out in front of you. Where do you feel the pressure? In my neck. Back here, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, no longer is your body opposing gravity through the structure, it's opposing gravity through the back of the neck and also in this low back area, which eventually is gonna cause pain and, and you're just walking around. The head always will adjust which means these short muscles in the back of the neck called the suboccipital muscles will adjust. The body always wants to be horizontal with the ground or with the horizon. So I may be, when I'm sitting at the computer, let's put it in day-to-day -day okay. terms. I'm sitting at the computer and I know I'm guilty of doing this. Okay, mm -hmm. could that be causing a lot of my discomfort oh, absolutely. when I get that? tension and that soreness and but not only is with the head forward like that and you're on a computer now you start involving the muscles of the shoulder girdle the chest the pectoralis major minor anterior serratus which pull your shoulders forward like this so those all are carrying what we call trigger points that can refer pain to another area of the body and I'm a great specimen because growing up, you know, and I didn't have good self-esteem growing up, you know, and I was one who was, you know, I would be like this. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it was very, I was kind of like hiding, but I don't even realize what I was doing when I was like this. Plus, I think if you're not in shape or if you're, if you're oh, overweight, yeah. it's hard to be, and you have to conscientiously you know, yes. train yourself to think to be like this, and then you have right. to be in physical condition to, to maintain it. Correct, because you can only hold yourself for a short while. Then the muscles get tired. You know, if you're trying to hold yourself in a correct posture. If your muscles aren't strong enough, the posterior or back muscles aren't strong enough to hold your, chest, you know, your shoulders back in correct alignment, they're gonna fatigue. And, and then you're not always thinking of that. You're thinking at whatever task you're, you're doing. So you're gonna start slooping and, and drooping. Yes. You know. Now, take somebody like me who, good physical condition, conscientious and knows and understands this. Mm -hmm. But my day-to-day -day lifestyle, when I'm rushing and I'm, you know, I'm a busy person and I'm lifting a briefcase and I'm lifting my little Salvatore, my dog, and doing things. Massage is very important to help me to get back into this, correct. correct? Explain why. Well, because it takes the tension out of those tight or constricted muscles, allows new blood supply, allows, decreases pain, and allows the body to go back to where we were built to be. Meant to be. Yes. When we're out of whack here, another thing I want to talk about because so many people have knee pain mm -hmm. or have leg pain, especially knee, or ankle and foot pain. Mm -hmm. When you're out of whack in here, talk to me about how it can be causing problems over there. Very good point. You see this dot right here? Yes. Sorry, I'm not as good as my teacher was with this, but anyway, that's the center of gravity. So. When I look at a patient when they come in, I check the pelvis first. That's pretty much going to tell me what the head's doing and what's going on down at the knee. Because as the center of gravity never changes, okay? So as the head projects forward, the center of gravity in the upper portion of the body is going to change to, and like we said before. All right, so use me as the example now. Okay. So if you move your head off of that gravitational line, as you can see, that line is now behind. So now your muscles behind your neck are supporting you rather than your bone. Okay. Okay? But here's where it changes. When we come down here 
and the pelvis is flexed like in the in the prepping like this? of this. Tell me back yes. or forward. No, but as it goes forward, then the gravity line goes up, goes behind your neck, but in front of your knee. When your pelvis is forward, your knees lock back. So now in here, you're pre you're putting a lot of pressure on the front side of what they call the meniscus. So in, in the back, when you're projected forward, you're putting pressure on the disc to move backwards, and that's where it presses on nerves, and you start to and get- And you get back pain. Right, sciatica and such. So what can we do, for example, to fix the knee pain? Well, for example, as long as the internal structures have not been damaged, we can correct them by releasing specific muscles, specifically the quadriceps, the front of the leg, the low back muscles, but you always have to address what's going on in the neck in order to get the pelvis to stay. And, and I think the, that is probably key here. You have to realize there's a connection between up here and down here. Absolutely. And all, all the, the way, way down. down here. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Because that gra we are, these are, the body is established to, to have these structures as supporting factors to oppose gravity. So when I think of having good posture, the first thing I think about is shoulders back. Okay. Not too far back. I Correct. mean, I want them. Correct. So you got to think Naturally about. Naturally back. Correct. Then right. I think about holding in my abdominal muscles. Now, I help me with where, because I don't think you think about where your hips and knees should be when you think about proper posture. Okay. So where should now, the hips and knees be? What I want you to do, because I want you to feel what I'm talking second. about here, okay? okay? I want you to rotate your pelvis forward. As you notice... Let me, I'm gonna even roll my pant leg up so they can see my knee. Okay. Okay. Now bring your feet square to each other, correct? Okay. All right, now rotate your pelvis. Look what happens to the knee. They wanna lock back, okay? So now you're not, you're, you're, you, you, the front muscles of the lower leg are now supporting instead of the bone. And also what happens, as we've talked before, is you start to toe grip. Hammer toes. That can become and develop in the hammer toes, yes. And this, think about when you're exercising, because this is, this is tough enough to have to kind of think about when you're standing. There's a lot here if you really want to focus on it and practice. Mm -hmm. But think of your day-to-day -day movement or when you're exercising. When you're not using proper form, and you're, you can be throwing things really out of whack oh, yeah. and causing a lot of dis problems, a lot of discomfort, aches and pains. You know, the points we're making right. about understanding this whole concept. Correct. And also, you hear a lot of plantar fasciitis. And well, when we think of that, we think of runners, you know, because they're constantly pounded. There's no difference. Explain to what, it, what people what that is. Plantar fasciitis basically is the fascia and the muscles on the sole of the foot in through here is a bigger picture they start it, it just starts to get inflexible and they become rigid causing a lot of pain mm -hmm. and sometimes pulling away from the bone calcium spills out you develop a spur but that is secondary to the real problem that's going on in the pelvis so if we can correct the alignment in the pelvis through cranial sacral work or pelvic stabilization and get the hips back where they're supposed to be, then through your, your either exercise, strength training, which I think everybody needs no matter how old you are. In fact, the older you get, uh, the more important. I think it is more important. Okay, so I come to you okay. for, and, and you're a rather unique massotherapist in the fact that you like to address your clients from determining what's wrong before you start to treat them, correct? Right. People come in and they'll tell me where their pain is. Before they tell me that though, a lot of times I can tell them where their pain is due to the positioning of their posture. So I so come to I you find, 
and I can view and tell you, my, I don't know, you know, I get a lot of tension in my traps. I, right. you know, I, I, I'm a runner and, I, you know, I just need a good overall deep tissue mas massage. And I think it's just part of me and you say, like, not really. So yeah. I'm coming to you, so tell me the first thing okay. you're going to do. The first thing I do is, and I have these charts. I don't know if the camera can zoom in on this, but we'll it shows um, the body from front, uh, standing in a lying position. And it also shows the body and what the pelvis is doing. We're going to use me and demonstrate how a body can be out of alignment, which we know I am from when we prep for the show. So go ahead and show our viewers what you would do or what, how you determine that. Okay. So I'm going to step behind Mary only for TV. Normally I would be in front. Okay. And I want you to just sort of scoot this way a little bit. Okay. Okay. When I check the level... Now wait a minute. Tell me how you want my feet and so on because that's important. Okay. I want your feet straight okay. and about a fist or better apart. Okay. Basically level with your, your hips so you're not standing out with your legs out wide. All right, and you know what's interesting? Just doing that the way you want my feet, which is supposed to be correct right now, mm -hmm. feels awkward to me. So that tells right. me obviously I'm out of alignment a little bit. And there's muscles that are, that are causing that, that feeling that you're having. Yes. Okay. So when I look at the top part of her pelvis, you can see that the right side is slightly higher than the left. Your right hand is higher than your left hand. This on hand over here. Yes. Is higher. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to come in front and let's, I'm going to check two landmarks that I use. And landmarks to you are points. Points on the bone. Okay, and that's okay. where your thumbs are. Right. Can you do it from here so they can see? Um, well, I have to get on them first. Okay. So, as you can see, this is higher, but yet, because the hip is rotated forward, that's going to make this point lower. And we can correct that. Now, what's that doing to my legs? Explain. Well, what it's doing is what we talked about as far as when the pelvis rotates forward. So it's I have locking. one leg longer than the other technically right now. Right. And plus there's more pressure on the knee because as you rotate forward, your knee wants to go back. So I, I may be thinking, oh, I have one leg longer than the other. When what really is going on is I'm out of alignment and I, it's an artificial lengthening of the leg that can be corrected. Correct. Okay, so now you want me to turn to my side. Yes, and what I wanna do is I wanna check and see if this bone is actually rotated or short period or longer period, one or the other. So by checking this, as you can see that angle, that's about a 10 degree angle. Now, I want you to turn and face the other way. Face my back to you? This way. Okay. And I'm on the same spots, and you can see the angle is not as abrupt. So, which tells me that because of this bone rotating, that's going to bring this point right here lower when I check you from the front. Mm -hmm. But when I check you from the top, I'm gonna see an elevation. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I wanna make sure that Mary's body is in alignment and level. So when I look at her lying down, I notice that the right leg is a little longer than the left. The ankles don't match, and that's with the toes. And then I'm going to check the pelvis. Now, when Mary lays down, her pelvis shifts, and that's why it's important to see a person standing and laying with pressure off of the spinal cord. So, Mary, what I'm going to have you do. Okay. So I'm going to have you rotate your hips forward 
like so. Arch your back. Wait, okay. arch my back would That's be this. Like a pelvic rock, like this, okay? That's back, and then opposite of that, relax, and then down, that's forward, okay? Okay. So we're gonna go forward first. Okay? Okay. And now go ahead and rotate your hips forward. There you go. Oh, it feels funny, because it's like, how are you doing that from up there? Well, what I'm doing, the temporal bone and the ilium, the hip bone, work together in what they call cranial sacral. And it's basically a system within a system. Relax. Now I want you to roll them back towards me. Roll your pelvis back, perfect. Okay, so what are we doing now? Right now we're just getting some movement it feels good in the jaw, too. Yeah. Which is a point we might want to talk about. Yes, because I get very tight in the jaw, mm -hmm. and I sleep with a bite plate because I, um, you know, tight bay, grind my hips teeth. forward. Okay, now tell me what the jaw has to do with all this. Well, we're going to, I'm going to wait till you stand up. How's that? Okay. Now rotate back. This is like interactive massage. Yes. Okay, now relax. Now I'm also gonna check where her ears, if they're level or not, without the sunglasses, <laughs> and they're level. So which tells me that the pelvis is probably gonna be level. Now, would they have been level before you did what you just did. No, and we checked that, if you remember, in the prep. Correct. So that little bit has helped me. Now, your pelvis here is level. Your tops of your hips are level. And, and we want to match the feet. You feel your ankles matching? Yes. Okay, that's all it takes. That's pretty now, amazing. I will tell you, let's help you up here. I will tell you. Thank you. That one thing that I do disagree on. Yes. Is putting just a heel pad in. You know how people have inserts in yes. their shoes? I disagree with just putting it in the heel. Yes. Because what it does on the foot is it just actually accentuates what already was going on in your hip. So you like an orthotic? I like <clears throat> the whole foot to be supported if it's a true short bone okay. in the leg, either the femur or the tibia. If it's gonna be a short bone, that's usually where you find it, okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of getting custom-made orthotics. Mm -hmm. I think most people, and especially as we get a little bit older and we're mm -hmm. active and so on, I think everybody can benefit from them because I don't think anybody has the perfect Even alignment. Even if it's an arch support, you're correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, what I also want to do. So if I got on my, my now, reformer now for Pilates and I laid on my table, you know, I do feel like I'm, I can just feel my posture. I you're, would, you're probably on the middle of your, you feel like your, your balance is centered, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. And I didn't before. As a matter of fact, even with my toes, you know how you talk about how mm -hmm. you get hammered because I would curl them? I would. Now they're just nice and straight. Well, even on your left foot, you're not curling your toes up to relieve the pressure. That's so, unbelievable. So then what I look at, after I've checked that, and then I also want to check with the shifting this way of the pelvis. I which want... in Mary is perfect. Is it? Yes. Oh, good. So then I'm gonna check the shoulder level and that's good. And I'm gonna check the rotation. I'm checking for this in Mary. Do you want me to turn to the side? Which, no, which is also good. Then I wanna check the base of her skull, which is called the occiput, and that's level. From the side, I'm looking at, look straight, Mary. Okay. I'm looking at. Now, can I turn to the side so sure, our viewers can see what sure. you're looking at? 
when I'm looking at her ear, over her hip, over her ankle, over. So Mary, right now, her posture is correct. And we didn't now, start the show that way. No, but I will tell you, without muscle work, a manipulation of those tissues that yes. are causing it to pull. In other words, you don't move your finger by the bone. You move it by muscle. Yes. So if I don't go back and do the correction on those muscles, relaxing the, the tightened muscles and whatnot, you're just going to go right back into your old form. And I think you do just from your day-to-day -day activity. Without proper treatment. Yes. Yes. Um, I want to show some exercises. One more thing I want to touch upon, though. Do you think I reacted a little bit better only because I'm in pretty good physical shape? If, oh, or, absolutely. So I think it, it can be a little longer process, and but working into good physical condition to give your body the strength and the ability to snap back into shape Correct. is also a part of this process in developing and maintaining Good alignment, correct? Absolutely correct. Well, let's go and we want to do some exercises real quick before we uh, finish up today because we want to show them some things they can be doing too to help on their own. Okay. We're going to do some exercises and we're going to start with one of your favorite things, which are these bands. Correct. And you like these bands because you like them at least about one inch long. Mm -hmm. They're pretty thick. They got yeah. real nice tension on them, right? Yeah, it's it's basically a universal band okay. that you can use, everybody can pretty much use. Okay. Okay? All right, so what are we going to do so, with that? So, first of all, we talked about the rounded shoulders. So we want to start with stretching Which is that. this. Yes. Okay. So, so take take this hand and you just grab the band, okay? Good. And then same thing, and you grab the band. It doesn't matter if the band twists. Okay. It just makes it a little stronger. Okay, so now so I have the band wrapped around each wrist and I'm right. holding it in my hand. Throw it over the back of your head. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Now you want to try to stretch out. Start. Now does it matter if the band is touching my back or don't, don't, do you want well, my arms you, like closer or further away? It depends on you, it, how stretchy this you is are. Hard. Your shake, that's a tough band for you. It's a good one. Yeah. Now move the band, your arms up and down just like this and down. It and reminds that, me a little bit of a lat pull, yes. Uh, a stretching same movement, kind of, yeah. But you're stretching. This is not a, stretchy a, a lat building pull. exercise. Now let me let, we're, now let me tell you. I automatically I look at myself or I feel myself a little bit of my improper alignment with my posture because. Yep. Okay, perfect. Because so many times people are doing exercise. Now Tilting they're doing their, this. Yeah, that's right. pulling them forward or it's pulling them back because they're going. That's not what you want, right? No, because you're not getting the the actual benefit of the Exercise. what we're at we're right. trying to attempt to do. Right. So even though you may be stretching here, you may be throwing your so you've got to be conscientious of the whole body. Always. Posture is always the key. Perfect. Okay, next. Okay. Then what I want you to do, and I'll stand to the side. Mary, you stand there. Okay. So that they can see you. Okay. And you want to take your hand, okay. put it on your foot. The band is wrapped around the middle of my foot. And grab the band like I have. Okay. Tip underneath. Don't let your hips move. Basically what you want to do is you want to rotate sideways. You can pull on this for extra pull. And that is going to stretch these side muscles, the lat and also help your shoulders to come back. Boy, you feel it. And I'll tell you, this is You're one that- You're feeling it here, correct? Yeah, but I'll tell you what, this is an advanced exercise. So if our viewers- They have, sh they have smaller well, bands. Right, I was gonna tell them that there are different tension levels for these bands. So correct. if you're just a beginner, start with the beginner's band. Right. If you're advanced, you can go to this level, but there, and there are many in between. So make sure when you're buying a band, I always recommend too, you know, buy a couple of different, you know, tension levels yes. for different exercises and know where you are but in you the know, exercise process. If if your funds are low, you can also get a regular belt, put it around your wrist, and all you're trying to do basically is pull that 
arm across. Well, you know what? And that's, that's wait, so all you would do with the belt. Is you'd put it around your wrist. Yeah. You know, you put it through the hole like you would a normal belt. Yeah. And you just basically are pulling so that you're stretching those side muscles and also the muscles, because this muscle That's a here, good way too for beginners maybe to correct, get started. Correct. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And do it on both sides so always, you're balanced. Always both sides. Yeah, yes. strongly recommend. Sh yes. Shall we do a couple of uh, lower abdominal exercises? Because sure. that's so important. You sure. know, again, I don't think I have ever talked about a topic on this show that we didn't go back to the core. Everything, Absolutely. no matter if we're talking about diet and digestion, we're talking about any type of illness, we're talking about strength and functionality, we're talking about sports, we always end up back to the core. So it's like right so in where, here. where did we start with when I did your pelvic analysis? The core. The core. Yep. Okay, basis, so, so I'm gonna get down on the floor. I have to move okay. my little mic box over here so I can, I think, move do what I'm supposed to sideways. do. Move it I think that's still gonna be in your way. Are we good? Okay. Turn this way. Okay, now lay down. Okay. Okay, now just reach back and grab my ankles. Okay. Okay, now, are you tell me when. Okay, now what Mary's gonna do now is work the lower abdominals, which is helping to stabilize her pelvis. I always prefer to hold on to something that takes some strain off the lower back. So Mary, bend your knees slightly. Now, before we do that, do you know I want to tell them I am now very conscientious of trying to hold my abdominals tight. Always before you do right. an abdominal exercise, to kind of suck in those abs. You know, it's a good place to start so you have nice tight abs and try to maintain that throughout. Correct. Now, bring your knees together. Always, anytime you can get support, you want to take advantage of that. So keep your knees and your ankles together. Now, what I want you to do is just raise up until your pelvis, your butt comes off the ground. Okay, and down. Yeah. And this looks fairly easy, but yeah. if you're doing it slow and controlled, right, and you're trying to, you know, take it up right. nice and slow, let your glutes raise you, it's it, it's not easy. Right. So do one more of those. And I'm taking my time. It's sort of like a one two, three, and the same. four, up, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, down. Correct. Okay, now, next. Now, knees together, yep. feet together. Now, what I want you to do, never moving the position of your legs, lift them off the ground towards me, your knees towards me, okay. holding on. Can I lift my hips or you just want I this? want your hips to roll. In order to get the lower abdominals, make sure that your hips are coming off the ground. Okay. okay. And back down. Now, you now, don't have this to. This is not easy. I want our viewers to know practice and make sure you have something you're holding on to that can hold you. Don't get a light chair. Right. Okay. All the way down. Nice and slow and controlled. And, and then back up. And you want to be breathing and exhaling on your way up. I can get all the way up if you want me to. Okay. No, 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 no. I want you to keep your knees in that position. Now back down. And you know what might be nice? If you're just starting out or this is hard for you, let somebody hold you and help you to pull with sure. your ankles pulling sure. up until you can do it on your own because it is difficult. And then when you get really super with this, lift up, bring them all the way up to me, and I push them down. That's good. And I push them down. I like okay? it. Yeah. Now that's a resistance movement. So it's basically a sit up with a little bit of weight. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And I'm real quickly going to demonstrate one of my favorites. And it's simply, I'm going to try to lay it at, at an angle here. And so you lay back and then notice when you lay down, try to take it one vertebrae at a time, Correct. keeping that abdominal area tight, tuck that pelvis back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hands Try over your head. Try to flatten your low back against the floor. Absolutely, so that you can't put your hand in Correct. underneath Correct. your back. And then I want you to, if you can't get all the way up, just start raising your legs a little bit, nice and slow. Knees just slightly, slightly bent. You never want to lock your knees. Never lock, right. Take them down, nice, nice. 
slow and controlled. This is the tough part, slow and controlled, because anybody can just pull them up like that. Right. And it's so hard. Which is on what this I do on a day where I'm in deck. a hurry. <laughs> yes, exactly. So now we're going to take it up where if you can take your hands and your legs up together, yeah. you want to try to get in that V, and then you want to nice and slow go down, but start that going down from here. That's really an nice. advanced move, by the way. Yep. But that's something that you can work up to. And there Correct. again, any time when you're laying or if you're on a bench and you've got your legs going up and down, you're doing work with that lower abdominal area. Now, so Mary, you could show them the one sitting where you showed, where you sat, sat up and just brought your legs up. That yeah. might be a start, too. Are you talking about like when you're just laying when like this? When you're just like that. No more. Don't lay. Okay. You're, the, the one you were sitting up and just now just start to bring your knees and feet together and bring them up. That's also a way to start if you can't do the whole laying down. Exactly. Thing. And it's still supporting your structure. Exactly. Okay. And I'll tell you what, believe it or not, you've got to be holding your abdominal somewhat tight. Right. Because that's kind of what's doing the work. Right. Thank you. Dino, You're as welcome. always, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's it was trippy. great questions. Info at thefitness.com. Dino can be seen. You can make an appointment with him at 330-758-1975. Let him know you saw him on our show. And I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you for watching. I'm Mary Papino, and this is Fit For You.